And if you love The Mandalorian, you've seen it, it's a long time coming. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and welcome to another unboxing. Now this one is of The Mandalorian. Well, not actually The Mandalorian, it's actually his spaceship. So this is the Razor Crest from The Mandalorian series, which you would have seen on Disney. And it's been quite a popular ship and it has been released before by Bandai, but they're only been very, very little ones, you know, like little, little tiny ones that you put on top of your uh, desk. But this is the first time that a quite large kit has been released. This is one to 72 scale, and it's been released by Ravel. So let's have a closer look. All right, so from the top there, you see the box art. You've got the Mandalorian, his head, very recognizable. And here you've got this huge action shot of the Razor Crest, the X-Wing in the background there. Okay, so this is by Ravel, produced in Germany. It's what they call a level three. Okay, so with the levels, they don't really correspond to any particular brand. Or I should say they do correspond to a brand. Only Ravel uses this system, which goes up to this level. So it's hard to compare to different brands, but within the Ravel range, level three is their mid range. So it's not particularly difficult, but it does have a lot of parts. So let's have a look inside. Now there's a lot of chunky parts. Probably be pulling out everything from here. All right, so we've got the manual. We've got a huge part of the fuselage there. Another set of sprues and some decals. What else is there? All right, and we've got some more. We've got some clear parts. Okay, let's pop this over here. Let's start off one by one. I'll move all this across here and we'll have a look at the main section of the fuselage. It's a single piece mold. See this is the top section which will have the wings and the engine nacelles. You just see the cockpit sections here. So you have glass that'll be placed in there. You've got open ramps. You can have them closed if you prefer. There's also the ramp at the back which is opened up. That's because there's interior detail you can put into here. I think a lot of people would like to see what the surface detail is like on this particular kit. So let's have a look. I'll get this to zoom in a bit. Get that a bit sharper, there you go. So you can see all the panel lines. The panel lines are all recessed. So that's a good thing because that's gonna help you put uh, panel line washed into them and make them nice and sharp. The great thing is you've got some various depth panels. Okay, so this is all smooth across here, but you've got a, a raised panel there, a raised panel here. You've got quite a section of sunken panel as well. Some nice fine surface detail here with some wiring. This is going around the back. There's the opening for the large ramp. There's even detail across here on the very back, which is very, very hard to see. Closed panels there. You got a mirror type of detail work on the other side. And as we come up towards the front, you can see the cockpit there. It's a very blunt nose. And you got some sharp details across there as well. And then on the very base, get the undercarriage areas. That's not really any detail. There'll be other panels covering that. So it does look quite good. So the areas here. There has been some talk about the actual texture. So it does have a, I guess you call it a, um, a mottled texture. It's almost like the mold was um, uh, acid treated and then certain areas were polished up. Now some people don't like that because they think, oh, it's a really rough treatment. I actually do like that because it gives you a, a more scale appearance. Anything in 72, which, I mean, this looks like a large model, but for scale, it's actually very, very small, which means any surface texture adds to the overall model, I think. And a model would look very similar um, if it were hit with primer anyway. I guess what people are concerned about is it may not give you the mirror finish that you might want on the chrome finish. But I don't think it was meant to be that chrome anyway. If that's a really concern to you, you can polish this down. Won't be that hard. If you really want it smooth, you could probably hit it with a, uh, a gloss paint to start with. 
before you do your chrome treatment. And quite honestly, I think these are meant to look fairly filthy. I don't think it's ever had a mirror finish. But again, that's my thoughts on this particular finish of the kit. But as you can see, it's quite big. Okay, so that's the largest part. All right, let's get into some of these other bits. All right, so we've got a bag of clear parts. Quickly get that out of the bag. Okay, I want to do a zoom in a bit. A bit easier to see. Well, that's super zoomed. Well, since we've got it there, let's have a closer look at all these bits. Okay, so that's going to be the windshield. Now it's a very large section because this is just going to be attached to the inside of the cockpit. So you don't have all those little, little parts you're trying to fit into the fuselage. Then again, I may be lying there because we do have the actual individual little bits here. Where are we? Over here? Those ones here, they're probably the, the panels for the windows. There's actually a lot more glass here than I imagined it would have. You see they're fairly well polished but they're not perfect. So if you want to do even better, see how there's a little bit of distortion? You continue polishing that even more and then um, putting a clear on it as well. And that'll bring it up to a full gloss finish. But like I said earlier, I don't think it really deserves to be totally gloss. Remembering when you're, you're watching the series, it is really dirty. Okay, so let's just do the wide. There we go, so that's all your clear parts. Quite a selection. Reasonably clear, as you can see, the, there's a little bit of distortion going through it, but not too bad. Okay. Right, so we've got this set of sprue here. So you can see the largest area here, that's a base. It's an optional base to give it the look of it in flight. Just take the tape off. All right, so here we go. All right, so you get your base, just to support it in flight mode. Got this section here, which is going to support the actual fuselage. It's quite robust. It'll have to be because it's going to be a big aircraft. So there's a lot of weight there. But then it appears to be undercarriage pieces. And the other side. So you can see on the base of those skids, there's also detail there as well. Okay, now that's a manual, we'll put that aside and have a close look at that later. Now the other chunky bits are these. So these are the big huge engine nacelles. Okay, so there's actually two sprues in here. Let's look at this bigger one first. There's your engine nacelles, absolutely huge. You got some really nice ribbing type detail here. Now with these two piece molds, where you've got you know, a top and a bottom of the mold pressing together, and then you have two pieces and one is going to be connecting the other one, usually the detail across these sides suffers a bit because the mold has to release like this, which means it may lose some definition. And that has occurred here. So if I zoom in, if I get it on the right angle. Let's see if I can get that. You can see how the lines are really, really sharp here. So generally anywhere across the flat section here and along here of the mold, this will be the cleanest part because the mold is just lifting straight up. But as you go around the curve, you'll notice that it's actually diminishing because they need to flatten it off, otherwise it won't get any detail there. So if you wanted to enhance that, this will just need a little bit of extra scribe work, but you'll be able to get it to be as crisp as this, with a little bit of extra work. 
it's not a really poor design of the kit it's just simply making the kit easier to produce so with a little bit of uh, elbow grease you'll be able to get that really nice if you're not that advanced in kits just build it as it is and you can enhance that just with paint so from what I can see here you got two massive engine nacelles got some interior components you have the Mandalorian right here is in the seated position because he's going to be sitting in his cockpit where is he? there he is just getting into focus there okay so you can see how he's got his legs and his torso is all in the seated position and then you've got his arms just over this side there's a seat spin around the right way Uh, where is it? Just lost it. There it is. Here's his seat. It's got some nice details modeled in. Not a lot of parts to it. And then we've got some bulkheads. They've got some nice surface detail. More interior parts with, oh, I guess it's a, a net looking detail and a bit of hose. And then we've got more of the cockpit components. There's this control panel. And then a couple of seats there. There for all the two passengers within the cockpit as well. And then a few other little bits and pieces. Okay. Next we move on to some the second set of sprue that was in there. So these parts here, I think they're I'm not too sure about these bits. We'll check the manual. You've got engine components. Now if you were one that really enjoyed lighting these up, you could quite easily open up these individual parts here to make it look like a mesh and put an LED on the back and then you have these all coming out of the funnel, they'll look quite spectacular. This I think is part of the ramp. You've got the, um, the trademarks here, copyright 2021 for Ravel and Lucasfilm. And there's the other sections of the ramp. So that's the rear ramp. You can see that's the part of the hinge there. Okay. And then we have our final bag. And this is quite a large bit too. This is the top of the fuselage. Okay, two sprue in here again. Let's have a look at this one. This particular part is all the interior components. So these are the two cargo doors. Okay, which are going to match up like this. It'll actually be like that. Okay, so it's the interior part for this side of the fuselage. And then you've got the cargo floor. Actually, probably that's the floor. This is the, the upper bulkhead. Got a little ladder. And then these are probably side nacelles. Well, let's do a bit of a zoom. We'll have a closer look at what these internal details are like. So there's your cargo door. This is towards the front of the vehicle. This is going towards the back now. These are all the, the bits and bobs that are mounted on the side walls. The same on the other side. It's got a slightly different design. Now in the series there was a carbonite freezer in here as well so I'm not too sure where that's going to be. You'd imagine that to be separate. And you end up with this part and I think this is actual part of the cockpit. Okay so that's raised above the cargo deck. Okay so from there we're left with one final sheet which is this huge one. Okay, and that's the top of the actual aircraft. So you've got the cockpit panels here. So these are all those glass panels which I was talking about before. Where I thought we had one big massive panel to cover the front end. Well that big panel is actually across the top here. So it does have individual glass for each side. Got some really nice surface detail. Got some weaponry. And then these are the side cargo doors. They're also hinged. 
just a, a massive well, all of it's massive really so we have a closer look let's have a look at some surface detail here okay so that's the very center yeah, that's very well molded for not being separate components so obviously they've been trying to keep this as simple as possible while still having enough detail I mean if you were talking about like a TACOM kit you probably this top section will be made up of like 10 million bits but that's not for everyone okay so you've got the cockpit surrounds there what I would be doing is some of these parts do look a little bit agricultural you see how you're looking through that hole there it's not absolutely straight so you, you probably want to either scrape that out until it is straight or file it and then perhaps also test fit some of the clear parts so that you know that it fits there properly also here as well and I'll be doing that before I even put any paint on okay so there's the cargo doors oh, where is it there it is that's the other side so it's really nice surface detail on both sides then all of the rest of it is all pretty simple you're not going to be seeing any of this so it's all pretty basic okay so there's a the top bit okay so there are all the plastic parts we are left with the decals okay so decals just one simple sheet you can see how you've got some really worn marks because it was a bashed around vehicle this would be around the uh, part of the cockpit and then you've got uh, details for the instrument panels as well okay so here's a close-up of the decals themselves so reasonably crisp pretty basic really I mean you got some white decals here with just some outlines so there you go so there are the decals and that's all the components so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the manual all right so the manual let's zoom that out so I can see all that all right so it's pretty big all right so nice color manual which is unusual you don't often get full colored manuals got some tips here about building models you got your paint chart multiple languages these are all the Ravel numbers but you'll be able to find any particular equivalents in any brand you like here we have the legend of the parts there's the sprues A and B sprue C D E F and then G and then we start in the construction okay so construction starts with a cockpit and that's quite obvious here you do the interior parts first because they're going to be sandwiched inside the fuselage you have various bulkheads cockpit section here with the three seats Mandalorian gets painted up okay so we're mounting in the Mandalorian here now the cockpit instrument panel uh, some more bulkheads various bulkheads here and then that's basically completing that would be the uh, where is that actually don't know oh that's the front part of the uh, interior detail so that's a cockpit area we've got that large panel here which is a the cargo hold with the side detail panels top section here so basically that's all getting sandwiched together all that is only interior detail at this point now we start working on the large fuselage component there's the rear ramp you've got your side cargo doors they're getting mounted and this is where the internal detailed uh, sub-assembly is dropped into the fuselage some weapons here for the front each side and then the top of the fuselage is attached to the bottom part then we start working on the engines themselves okay so there's the bottom of that nacelle that big chunky bit which I couldn't work out before okay so we've got engines getting mounted now on each side then we've got the cockpit glass we've got the lower panel there's a couple of holes that you need to drill through here and then finally filling in some of these panels so that's um this is in flight mode hence why it's got the flying mark there so this is with undercarriage up and then you'll build the razor crest be sitting on the stand 
As we go on, this is the landed mode. So that's the undercarriage extended. So using different parts. And you get to this point here where you can have all these cargo ramps open. So you've got your extending part here as well. And the rear hatch. So there's an extension. And then that looks like an air brake. And then we get into the painting instructions. So you've got a top view, bottom view, and your front rear and your side views as well. Version here of what it should look like in flying mode. And then a version here of it in landed mode. And that's it. And so that's the Razor Crest. This is the biggest one to date. So this is the 70 second scale Razor Crest from the Mandalor Mandalorian series, I should say, which is a Star Wars spin-off. And this is a 70 second scale from Ravel. Very big kit. And if you love the Mandalorian, you've seen it, this is a long time coming. Um, great kit. Very, um, I guess, basic, I would call it, but it's not basic in total finish. So it's got scope to do extra to make it look really, really nice. Or you can build it as is, and it won't be a really burden-filled uh, build. So there we go. I think that's, that's a winner of a kit, and I might build one of these myself. So you should have a closer look at one of these. The Mandalorian. Razor Crest and won the 72 scale. Thank you for watching.